everyone, my name is Grace Wells and today I'm going to show you five simple and affordable products that you can use to create your own professional photo or video studio at home. Now this is the same exact at home studio setup that I have used for every single one of my videos. So every piece of footage that you have seen on this channel, I have used these five essential products to create. And my goal with this video today is basically just to show you that you don't need anything fancy to create amazing professional looking footage at home. You just need a couple of basic items, a little determination, a little creativity, and you can do it too. So what's the first step? A backdrop. When you're small and weak like I am, this is usually the difficult part. We did it. Or did we? All right, so. Here is our backdrop. It is a two meter neutral color. I think it's called cappuccino backdrop by Colorama. I think it was about $70. Now I understand that $70 might sound like a lot for a backdrop. And I will admit that there are more affordable options like fabric backdrops. I would recommend, however, using a paper backdrop because it's a lot easier to evenly light. The other problem with the fabric backdrop is that you tend to get lines or creasing in it. And although you can use an iron or a steamer, it's sometimes hard to get these out completely and they can really mess you up in post if you're working in After Effects or something like that. So I would definitely recommend if you can afford it, although it is about twice the price, I would get the paper backdrop because it's gonna make your life easier and you will not regret it. So now that we've got our backdrop, the next logical step is that we need a backdrop stand. So in this bag is my backdrop stand, and because I'm using a paper backdrop, it is a heavy duty backdrop stand. If you get the paper backdrop, believe it or not, they are really freaking heavy. I mean, you saw how hard it was for me to get that thing out of the box. So definitely get a heavy duty backdrop stand if you can, because they can buckle under the weight of the paper backdrop, and you obviously don't want your backdrop collapsing. All right, we've got our backdrop set up. We're pretty much halfway there. Um, a quick note about light source. As you can see, I've positioned this backdrop directly across from a big bay window. So I'm getting a lot of natural light in here right now. Depending on what light source you wanna use for your backdrop, you're gonna have to be strategic about where you place it. So I tend to use a lot of natural light. I love natural light. So I'm always gonna have my backdrop directly across from a natural light source so that I get a ton of natural light flooding in. Looks really nice pretty evenly lit. On the other hand, if you wanna do the opposite, if you wanna use just artificial light and you wanna control your light in a very particular way, you're gonna to have to make sure you're using a space where you can either put up blackout curtains to block out natural light coming through the windows or you're using a space that doesn't have any windows at all. So just be super mindful about your source of light before you set up your backdrop because you don't wanna do all that work setting it up and then think, oh wait, there's not even enough light in here to shoot. Now, even though I do take advantage of natural light for most of my shoots, I do also supplement with artificial light. So I'm gonna show you which ones I use right now. Okay, we've got these newer lights. So these are LEDs, LED panels. And the great thing that I love about these is that you can control the dimness and the color temperature. So let me show you what I mean. This is the light, as you can see, it's an LED panel. And on the back, we've got these two knobs. This one says yellow, this one says white, and they're adjustable so you can control how much white light and how much yellow light you want shining on whatever it is that you are filming. All right, our two lights. So the great thing about these as well is that they can be either battery operated or you can just plug them into the wall. I personally love the battery operated option just because it's easier to move them around and change the lighting as you go without tripping on cables and stuff. Um, obviously, if you have a really long shoot, I think the batteries only last about two to three hours. So if you have a really long shoot, you can just plug them into the wall and get your power that way. I'll just show you what they look like when they're on. So here are our two batteries. You need two batteries per pack. They obviously just come with the lights. This is what it looks like when it's on full strength. As you can see, it's very powerful. It definitely does the trick. Um, you don't really need more than two, especially if you're working with natural light. And the pack comes with two, so that's excellent. So together, these two lights will run you around $200, which is not the most affordable option, but honestly, these are a great deal for LEDs, for dimmable LEDs. Another thing that I love to do with these is that I take them off the stands, actually, and I will use them to light the backdrop. So I will position it on a table or a chair, kind of towards the base of the backdrop and use it to create a gradient effect on my backdrop. 
And again, these are great for that because they're battery operated, so you don't have any cables messing about. So just to illustrate what I mean, I'll do something kind of like that to create a bit of a gradient on the backdrop, and then I'll put my products here on a table, and it creates a cool effect in the back. All right, so we've got our backdrop, our backdrop stand, and our lights. There's just two more things we need, and we'll be ready to shoot. So these next two items have to do with your camera setup. For the purposes of this video, I'm not gonna get into which camera and which lenses you should use, just because I think that's a whole nother topic entirely. If you're curious, I'm using my Sony a7 III right now, but again, besides the point, we're just gonna talk about the camera setup specifically. All right, so this is my basic camera setup. The first thing you need is a tripod. Honestly, I don't think it matters what brand of tripod you have, as long as it has extendable legs and you can adjust the head. So by that, I just mean you can tilt the head like so, and the movement is smooth. And ideally, you also wanna be able to twist it like this. So just as long as you have kind of a smooth moving tripod head, you're good to go. And then the second thing that I always use in my camera is this external monitor. The reason that I really love using an external monitor, even if it is a relatively small one like this, is that I just find the camera screen way too small to actually see if you're getting quality footage. You don't know necessarily whether the footage you're getting is in focus. You don't know whether the colors look good. You don't know whether a spot of it is overexposed. It's hard to tell on such a small screen. So having an external monitor like this will just help you to ensure that all the footage you're getting is exactly the way you want it. So you don't then put it into your editing program later and think, ah oh, crap, why didn't I see that on my camera screen? And this monitor that I use, just in case you're curious, is by a company called SD. I think I got it on Amazon. I believe it was about $150. This may not seem like the most essential aspect of the studio setup, and honestly it isn't. You can get away without it, but I just had so many instances where I've looked through my footage and thought, oh, I wish I saw that. So I would recommend getting this if you can afford it because it's a lifesaver. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed learning about my home studio setup. If you did, be sure to hit the subscribe button so that you can see all my future videos. And I think it's time for me to start shooting, so I'll see you next time.